Esta não. But I, is it full or Depois, como chegamos lá. So here, uh, we we already talked a lot about spanning tree, okay? So we are going to see uh, not a lot of detail because spanning tree is very very old protocol, and in bigger networks there are some things, some different protocols arriving. For example, there is something called shortest path shortest path bridging, which basically uses uh, an algorithm, a routing algorithm, but with max to solve the loop problem. Okay? It, it's based on, on the ISIS routing protocol, but it's, it's not widely deployed also. And once again, in campus networks, you still have a spanning tree. Okay? So, the problems we already saw broadcast storms, we had broadcast storms multiple frame transmissions and MAC database instability. We already saw that in the previous, in the previous uh, slides. Okay, so we need to solve this. How does the SSPNT protocol works? It elects a root and then it builds a tree. That's why it's called spanning tree, the spanning tree. Okay, so mathematically a spanning tree is a tree in a graph, is a tree that spans all nodes, a single tree that spans all nodes. So it has a rod and it reaches every, every node of the graph. Okay? And it cuts every loop because a tree does not have loops. Okay. So STP has a process to let the loop reach. When the switches are connected, they exchange special frames called BPDUs, okay, which is for Bridge Data Processing Unit, I think it's that. Okay. So these are frames that exchange information that, that is needed to build the spanning tree. And the first information that it exchange is the priority or the MAC addresses of both things, the priority and the MAC addresses of everybody. Okay? So everybody will say to everybody a MAC address and a priority if the priority is configured. And then the root bridge is elected. How? It is the one with the highest priority, or if the priority is equal in all of them, which happens if nobody procedures, if you just use use the switch out of the box. Everyone will have the same priority. In that case, it elects the bridge with the smallest MAC address. Okay, so it would set the MAC address as an absolute value, the 48 bits, and choose the one. It chooses and chooses the one with the smallest value. And then, is, since they all exchange this info using BPDUs, they all know and they all agree to which one is the root bridge. Okay. Then, they also use the BPDUs to select the root port. The root port is the port that is closest to the root bridge. Okay? What you need to know if you're configuring a network, you need to understand which ports, is, which ports are going to be, to be cut. Okay? So we won't go into a lot of detail on how this SCP protocol works. We, are under, we will try to understand how it works so that when we are configuring a network, because when you are configuring a network, you will always want to use the, the quickest protocol, which is the latest standard. There's no point of knowing all, all of them if you always want to use the best one. Okay? What you need to know is understand which switch will be the root bridge and looking at the topology and knowing the root bridge, trying to see what the traffic is doing, what what's not okay. Because that's what sometimes is sometimes difficult. And then you will see the several versions in terms of, because you can have the same spanning tree to all VLANs, you can have one spanning tree per VLAN, or you can have something that is called MS, MSTP, which is a spanning tree for a group of VLANs. 
and this always makes this, this also makes uh, differences in terms of, of how the, the traffic is, is going and if I'm using or not the topology to its fullest. So, for example here, you have this topology. First thing, which one will be the route? Which one will be the, the root bridge? So, if the priority is the same, you see the priority is the same in all. Okay, since the priority is the same in all of them, it's going to choose the smallest MAC address, which is this one. So this one will be the root bridge. Okay. Next part. Next part. Which ports are forwarding? So the ones that are closest to the root bridge will be working. So and they are called designated ports. So this is going to be a designated port. And the, and this. Oh yeah. Sorry. It's not designated port. It's a root port. Okay. So, a port, a root port, is a port that directly connects to the, to the root bridge. So, this is a root port, this is a root port, and then you have, you see, root port, root port, and then this switch has the same distance to the, to the bridge for, bo for both sides, okay? If it, that, if it didn't have the same distance, the root port would be the one that is with the shortest distance. Okay? In this case, it will have to untie this. So one of them will be the root port. Okay? And it will, it, it will untie this by the MAC address also. So he knows by the, BDPU, by, by, by the BDPUs that he, ca he has this, the bridge from this side at two hops and the bridge at this side at two hops okay so it has to decide if the same info in both sides i'm going to choose the one with the smallest mac address so this is going to be the root port and the other one will be cut okay because it's not directly connected to the root and i can't have a loop okay so this is the one that's going to be cut so when you, you look to any topology, for example, the, the ones you have on, on, the, on the project. Uh, let's not put the link here because it might not be on layer 2, but these are on layer 2, okay? So you have two, loop here, two loops here, right? Some, something's going to be, to be cut. So for example, if the root bridge is this one, you know that this port is working because this is a root port. And this port is working because this is the root port, okay? Now, this one is the one that's going to cut one of them. It's either going to cut this or it's going to cut this. And it's the same situation because, you see, it's two hops away from the root, two hops away from the root. So it will choose either this one or this one to be forwarding and the other one is cut. Okay. If there was a link here, you also have this is working, this is working, okay, and now this one is cut because this is the root port, okay, and then it depends. In this case, this might stay cut if he cuts this one or if in the BPDUs this one knows that this one here is cut it will put this as a designated port okay no I can't because this does a loop okay this does a loop so this one must be cut also you see cut and cut so it's always looking at the route, seeing that the ones that are connected to the root are always working, and then on the other ones, it's the shortest path that, that stays on, and the other one is cut. If they are equal, one of them stays, the other one is cut. It's blocked. Okay? 
So what's the problem with this? First problem, there is no mechanism in the standard spanning, spanning tree for a, a root to know if the other ones cut blocked a port or not. So what STP originally did was to stay put for double the propagation time, okay? Which is, if you don't configure it a lot, for example, this is the default value that switches have, which is 20 seconds. 20 seconds is a lifetime, okay? In terms of uh, network inavailability, okay? Why, why do, do this, this, this times exist here? Because avoiding a broadcast storm is so important that I cannot put a port in the foreign state until I am sure that everybody saw the BPDV use, everybody knows wh where the root bridge is, everybody determined which ports should be working and which ports should be blocked. Since I don't have any notification mechanism, what I do is that I stay put for double the maximum propagation time that I consider for the network, and then I say, okay, after this time, this head time will reach everybody. So now I can put the port working. So in traditional spanning tree, every time there is a link failure and the tree has to be recalculated for everybody, every time a new switch is connected to the topology and forms a loop and the, 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 the spanning tree needs to be reconfigured, the network goes down for, in this case, 50, 50 seconds. Okay? To give time for all the videos to be uh, propagated, everybody to make its decisions, and when I, I put the, the, the ports up, I do not want to not close a loop. Okay. So I, I, I want to prevent, to prevent loops while the BPD information is propagating into the network. Okay. And so I have these three phases, the blocking, blocking ports only receive BPDUs, then I go to listening, listening ports receive and send BPDUs, but not data frames. Then I go to learning, okay? In learning, I still don't send data frames. I only forward BPDUs, but I start using the MAC addresses of the BPDUs to fill the MAC data. So I'm already acting like a switch in terms of doing MAC learning, but I'm still not forwarding data frames, okay? And then only after this time, I go to forward and then you can operate in the port operates normally. So this is a lot of time. Of course you can configure these times and make them, make them smaller. Okay, but there were an other sta another standard uh, appeared. Okay, so this is the original one. It's already from 1998. Okay. Then we have CST, which means one spanning tree instance for the entire bridge network, regardless of the number of villains. This means that I can have 10 villains, but the same link will be cut for all of them. Because what, even if I have 10 different broadcast domains, the spanning tree is calculated to the entire layer to layer. Okay. Then we have this PVST plus which was a Cisco non-standard enhancement that makes a separated, um, separ a separated spanning tree instance for each VLAN configured on the network. Okay, we will see the advantages next. Then in 2004 this was updated, okay, with the rapid, oh yeah, this isn't even rapid spanning tree at this point, but the subtended bridging also allowed what this Cisco enhancement did, being one spanning tree for each VLAN. Okay, and then around this time, these two things occurred. Actually, these two things belong here on, on the on this update. Okay, so per VLAN also, which is not here, also on the standard in 2004, multiple spanning tree 
which is a variation on, of the curvy lamp, which is instead of having one spanning tree for each villain, I can make groups of villains that share the same spanning tree. Why? Because I might not have diversity to have a different spanning tree for each villain. For example, if I have a network with three switches, I only have two different spanning trees. One in, in which place in the room in each of the three. Okay? If I have four switches, I only have four different possible spanning trees. So for example, if I have four switches but 20 villains, there's no point of having 20 different spanning trees because I can only have four different hypotheses. Okay, so I will have 20 divided by 4 that are equal. Yeah. So, for that case, we have multiple spanning trees. In that case, I will get the 20, dividing 4 groups of 5, and each group of 5 has the same spanning tree. Okay, because if I have the program map, I have 20 different uh, spanning tree running. I am using the processing of the switches to calculate things, and in the end, they will be. There are only four hypotheses, so the five, each five of, of them will be equal. Okay, and then also in this revision appeared the rapid spanning tree. Okay, rapid spanning tree. What was the problem? I don't know if the other switches have received the reviews or not and if they already made their decisions and if they already bought the parts that are to be bought. So what can we do about that? We introduce a negotiation mechanism in which each neighboring switch tells me that he already blocked his port. Okay? So it propagates in a way. I send the VPDUs, I bought my ports. The other one receives VPDUs, blocks its ports, and when it, their, it, the, its ports are blocked, it tells me you can open yours, because I have mine blocked, so we won't have problems. And then so on, then he does the same thing with the neighbor, and after more or less the VPDU propagation time, everybody will already have the ports following. Because they know each time they can put the at each step, they know they can put the ports forwarding because the next switch already blocked his. Okay, so there won't be a loop. I have a figure here that helps understand. Okay, the default configuration in Cisco switches is one VLAN per switch. Okay, but if you don't do anything, it's using this for nothing because in the practice, if you don't configure the priorities, it's going to use the MAC address, and the MAC address is the same for all villains, so the root bridge will be the same for all villains. So, the default configuration makes no sense, okay? Either you put this in common spanning tree, or what we usually do is we maintain the per VLAN spanning tree, but we change the priorities so that we have different routes for the different VLANs, different routes, different root bridges for the different VLANs. Okay? Why is this important? Because we want to use the topology, for example here, if I have VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, okay? If I have the same root bridge for both VLANs, for example, imagine that this is the route for both VLANs, okay? I'm using common spanning tree. So this is a root port, this is a root port, so this one will be blocked, okay? For both, this means what? This link is never used. This link will only be used if one of these fails. So, if, but if, am I, if I'm using one spanning tree per VLAN, I can do this, which is the root for 3 is here and the root for 2 is here. This means what? That for VLAN 3, this port is blocked. For VLAN 2, is this one this is, that's blocked. So both are used. 
this one is used for villain 2 and this one is used for villain 3 okay and I don't have any any unused link so there is one link that is blocked for all villains okay I, if I have a third for example if I had a villain 4 I would put the root here for the villain 4 and in that case for villain 4 it would be this part that is cut so each link is cut for one of the villains and forwarding for the other two now if I have a, a fifth villain I have no more choices okay I have to share the root and I have to share the spanning tree that's why MSTP came because at that, at that point there's no point of having the processing cost of building of calculating another spanning tree because it's, it will have to be the same as one of these okay so for villain 5 the root either needs to be here or here or here so it will either be equal to the spanning tree of 3 or the spanning tree of villain 2 or the spanning tree of villain 4 it will does not have another, another uh, hypothesis how is this done? configuration oh this is to use the rapid version you should also do this on your lab okay because by default it's using the one that every time there's a failure takes 50 seconds to, to, to go up so you should change to rapid PV, PVST and then this is on this switch this switch I want it to be the route for villain 2 you could use the priority there's a command to change the priority it's spanning tree villain 2 and then priority and then you put the value of the priority but that uh, uh, obligates you to know the default value of the priority so that you put a different value so this is kind of like a macro command this one that changes the priority for you okay so if you say that this is going to be the primary what it does and it puts a better priority here for villain 2 than the default one okay the secondary puts a worse priority so meaning that you want this to be the root for villain 2 and it will be the root for villain 3 but only if there isn't another another one so if you do the inverse here okay so in this one you would do what you would do spanning tree villain 2 root secondary here and for villain 3 root primary you do the other way around and this makes the priorities inver inverse okay where is the best place to have this on your on your, on your project the gateways will be here okay so and in a campus network most of the traffic is to outside of my network so most of the traffic will be through the gateways so I want the shortest paths for the gateways so the root bridges should be here okay and to not so in order not to have a link cut for both you have three villains here so one two and three in order to not have a link that is cut for all of them the best thing is to place for villain 2 here villain 3 here and then for villain 1 you have to share okay because there's no point on putting one here here you have a difficult, a, a difficult choice you can place the root for one here and this has the advantage of not having a, a link a, a link that is cut but it has a disadvantage which is everybody on villain one will do a longest path to reach the gateway so there isn't a correct answer both of them work but they have different implications you see and this happens a lot here okay there is not a single configuration that works good you can have multiple ways of doing things but you need to understand 
the differences. In this case, the difference is this. If you put VLAN 1 together with VLAN 2, for example, this means that there is a port that is only working for VLAN 3. Okay, and there's another one that is cut for VLAN 1 and VLAN 3. If you put VLAN 1 here, there's one that is cut for VLAN 1, one that is cut for VLAN 2, and one different that is cut for VLAN 3. So you only have ports cut for one VLAN. If you place up, you have one that is cut for two VLANs, so it will be less utilized, because it only carries traffic for VLAN 3. But if you put the root bridge here to, to one, what happens is, this would be the root, this will be a root port, okay, and this will be cut. So this means that to reach the gateway, if the gateway is here, the traffic will do this. So it has to traverse two links instead of one. Okay? So what is best best? You have I would put it here because the 90% of the traffic is through here and it's better to just traverse one link here and have an underutilized link which only uses VLAN 3 than to have um, a longer path to the gateway. Okay, so this is another thing you can also do tomorrow. Okay, besides what we already saw, putting everything on rapid spanning tree and choosing, choosing the, the root bridges. On the left side, on the right side there's no point because on the right side there are no spots you might not have spanning trees because you, the villains only exist on a switch and you can use layer 3 from there on. And in that case, they will be using spanning tree but they will be their own root bridge and the, the spanning tree only has one node, so there's no problem.